So in our last video, we created a simple Docker file for our Go app. And let's say you want to extend this to integrate MySQL so that you can create the users in the database and also retrieve them from the database. And if you want to run our app and MySQL on a container, we would probably want to use Docker Compose to bring them up together and bring them down together. So let's first extend this Go app a little bit before writing our Docker Compose.yaml file. So we want to get rid of this predefined data here. And I just want to change this to UID. You don't have to. I just decided to use UID instead. And to create a DB, you can do SQL.open. And inside this open method, we will have to pass a driver name as well as the data source name. So we want to create a variable DB driver. We're going to define this as MySQL and a DB source. And this will be root. Our password will be password. And here you want to specify where your MySQL is running. And if you're running MySQL as a separate container and you're running it on port 3306, you would want to do localhost 3306. But later we're going to define our MySQL container inside a Docker network and our MySQL container is going to be named MySQL. So that could be simply referred to as MySQL using that service name. But I'll refer back to this later and that will make more sense later on. And I will just name our database users underscore DB and just keep it static for the sake of this demonstration. So here you're going to pass a DB driver and DB source. And this will give us our database. And we would also want to handle our error. If there is one, I'm just going to log it with fatal F. Saying connecting to my SQL and my error is that. And I will make a deferred call to close this database. And just to make sure it is running, I'm just going to log and say successfully connected to my SQL. And I want to modify this user handler a little bit so that it accepts a DB. And I just want to define a context here as well. And I'll pass a context here, define context.background and db would be this db that we just defined up here and before i forget i want to mention we have to specify our mysql driver for this to work so i'm just going to save this and as you can see this is not imported yet so what you can do is open the terminal and just run go mod tidy and that's going to import the dependency that we need here and we're going to scroll down a little bit and we want to extend our serve HTTP because we also want to accept a post request on this endpoint. So on post requests, we're going to create a user. And one thing we have to do here as well is add post to the allow list. And to save time on this, I'm just going to get rid of this and just paste what I have already prepared. And now these methods belong to the user handler. So I'm just going to call uh.getUsers, which is our user handler, and uh.createUser. So I'll just quickly go over what these do in case you're not too familiar with this. For create user, we prepare a SQL query or a statement using this insert user query. And we can use this statement to execute and we can pass the UID and name into this statement. And that's going to do the job that we needed to do, which is to run this query with these values inserted into these question marks here. And pretty much the same for the get users endpoint, where we call query context and pass in the get users query which is just to select the UID and name from the users. And that's going to return the rows. And we can iterate through these rows. And inside each iteration, we define a variable user and scan that row, store that in our user variable, 
and at the end of it we want to append this variable user to this users list that we have defined outside this iterations and then we can return the JSON encoding of this users list and send this response back to the user so that's all we needed to do to get the users from the database and also create them in the database. And you might have seen this folder structure in Go projects where we have a CMD directory and underneath that we would define our microservices. In our case, I'm just gonna call it user API. And inside this directory, we're gonna move this main.go file as well as the Docker file. Um, just because it's a better practice this way. And I also want to extend this app a little bit to integrate other microservices in the future. So in the future, if I want to add another service, let's say um, our gRPC service, I could create a directory here and add our main.go and Docker file in here. But for now, I don't need this. So the user API directory will contain this main.go and the Docker file. And in our root directory, that's where we're going to define our Docker compose dot YAML. And before we actually write our Docker compose, we do have to change our Docker file a little bit. And that is because the Docker file will be run from the perspective of the Docker compose file. So when we say build, it's not going to be able to find our main.go file. So we would either have to specify our repo in our GitHub repository, or you could simply do CMD user API main.go because this is from the perspective of our Docker compose file, which is in our root directory. So in order to find our main.go file, it will have to be CMD user API main.go. And the rest will be the same. So let's save this and come back to Docker Compose. So I'm just going to use the latest version of Docker Compose and define our services here. And under services, we're going to have our MySQL container as well as our user API. So I named this MySQL. You could, of course, name this however you wanted to. But because I named my MySQL container as MySQL, that's why when I refer to the MySQL we have, I'm using this MySQL service name here because that way the user API service would be able to reference MySQL that's inside the same Docker network. So under MySQL, I'm just gonna specify the platform just because I'm running this on my MacBook M1 or M2, I don't know. And I'm just going to specify the image name, which is the most important part here. And I'm just going to use uh, MySQL 8.0. And this is optional because I believe um, the MySQL container runs on port 3306 by default. But the expose command here or the expose field here is for internal use, meaning this MySQL container would be reachable from this user API on port 3306, but we won't be able to access this from our local machine using localhost 3306 or anything like that. If you actually wanna publish this port to your local machine, I believe what you will have to do is specify the port mapping here by mapping the port 3306 to a port on your host machine, which is the first option here. But we won't need to do that in our case because we only need to um, interact with MySQL container internally from the user's API. However, as I said, this is optional because I think it used port 3306 by default. The only other thing we have to define here is our environment variable. For MySQL, we just have to specify the root password, which I'm just going to keep as password. Moving on to our user API service, I'm going to add a build field and underneath that a context which would specify where your Docker file would be. 
but you could just leave this as a dot and specify where your Docker file is using the Docker file field. So I'm just going to say CMD user API Docker file. And for our user API, we would have to map this port to our local machine using the ports field. So I would map port 8080 to port 8080. And um, if you refer to the previous video, I mentioned how this first part refers to the port of the host and the second part refers to the port of the container. And if you want to override the command inside Dockerfile, you could also specify the command or if you have an entry point here instead of CMD, you could also override in your Docker Compose file using the entry point field. But in our case, that's not necessary. So I'm just going to save this. Oh, and also it's usually a good idea to say this depends on MySQL service since MySQL usually takes a lot of time and we want to make sure our user API service waits for this MySQL container to come up. So I'm going to save that and open the terminal and just run Docker Compose up. As you can see, there are a bunch of logs here and this has created two containers for us with these specific names. So ignore this Go API cluster metrics for now because that's just the name of the repository I have. And that's only because I want to extend this app um, to create a cluster with metrics in future videos. But for now, I'm just going to copy this and just um, exec into it. But before that, I just want to show you that you can view the containers running using Docker PS. So as you can see, we have these names here. So in case you don't find it in the logs, you can also find them from here. And just to test that everything is working as intended, I actually want to exec into this container and run this MySQL command by specifying the username and the password. That way I can go into the container and run the MySQL command. So you're going to see how we don't have any databases at the moment. And as we specified in our database source, we're going to name our database users underscore DB. So you can do that using create database users DB. And now when we say show databases, that's going to show our users DB. And then we can go into this users DB using use users DB. And now that we are inside this users DB, I want to create this users table. So a little bit of a manual process here, but I'm going to create a table called users. And to go on to the next line, I'm going to add a backslash here, enter so that I can continue typing on the second line here. So I'm going to have a UUID field, make this a primary key. And again, a backslash and enter a name field backslash enter and close this and just specify the engine. And this is not really necessary, but I'm just going to do it for good practice and just enter. So now that the table has been created, we can do show tables. And we can also do describe this users table. As you can see, we have created a users table with the UID and the name. So we can just exit from here. So now that we have created a database and a table, we can make a post request to the local host 8080 users endpoint, as well as a get request to retrieve the users. So let's first use curl to make a post request. I already have this saved in my terminal. So I'm going to first create a user David. As you can see, we get a user added response. And let's just add a few more users. And just one more here. And now when you make a curl to 
localhost 8080 slash users. This will return all the users we have in our database. So that's pretty much all I have. Thank you all for watching.